Welcome to Grassroots Radio Colorado. You are listening to Andy Pate. And I'm filling in tonight for Chris Cook. I'm joined by my lovely wife, Corey. Hello. Hello, Corey. Chris is taking the night off. You are being left in the hands of amateurs. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I know. I know. Not really. We, we really enjoy coming in here, and we are so excited to, to talk to all of you tonight. Now, Corey, what are we going to be talking about tonight? What's the big topic for the first hour? Well, we thought that maybe we should talk about oil and the low oil prices and the types of things that are going on in the world um, with regards to that topic. All right. Now, in the second hour, I just want to give everybody a preview. We're going to be talking about the 2016 presidential race. So get ready to weigh in with who you want to run on our side. And we're really looking forward to that. But in this first hour, we're going to be talking about oil and gas. You know... One thing that I really enjoy doing is talking to people who disagree with me. Mm-hmm. I enjoy it. Okay. You've seen me. I'm, I'm very pro-life. Very. I'll, I'll talk to somebody who's pro-choice. How does that go? It goes great. Right. I am a Christian. I'll talk to an atheist. How does that go? You guys have way too much fun. Right. On issue after issue after issue, I have no problem talking to people who are at variance with me. But there is one group. <laughs> there is one group that I do not get along with where I cannot contain the anger. Who would that group be? That would be the environmentalist crowd. The environmentalist crowd? Yeah. Am I mean? A little. No, actually a lot. I Folks, I cannot handle the environmental, the rabid environmentalist crowd. I'm not talking about the cons, you know conservationists. I'm talking about the nutsos. And I cannot handle them. They drive me crazy. They make me angry. And it's just very difficult. I myself have been known to cut down several trees while activists were still hugging them. Mm-hmm. Okay. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, and it felt good. And, um, you know, sometimes I try to bait them. Do you know that? Notice that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll pull up one of those massive plows up to a field and I'll yell, Boy, I hope no one lays down in front of this undisturbed grassland. I, I, I just don't know what I'd do. I don't know what I'd do. I don't know if I could plow under this fragile ecosystem if someone tried to save it. Yeah, that didn't go so well when you tried that in Anwar. I, well, it still felt good. Yeah. I just leave the motor humming menacingly for a while just to be <laughs> sure. Just see, you know, and after a while, some come down, you know, and they'll lay down. There's one. There's another. Ooh, this one is a Che Guevara t-shirt. That's a twofer. Yeah, well, and this is why I can't let you on the 16th Street Mall downtown, because there's all those green peace nicks that are hanging out. And I'm just worried I might have to come bail you out of jail or something. It's it's awful. Here's why they are so annoying. Because they are the most controlling group I've ever known. And, you know, they lecture constantly. Oh, my gosh. It's like every time you turn around something, it's not that they just care about the environment. It's that you don't care enough about the environment, so you're evil. Have you ever heard anybody preach that much? Mm-hmm. Corey and I have been in churches for many years. We have never heard preaching like the environmentalist crowd. So, Corey, here's what, when, you, when you and I deal with environmentalists, it's good cop, bad cop. You're the good cop. I'm the bad cop. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask you, who do I really, you know, who could fix me? Who well, could make me better and nicer to these people? Well, you know, I have tried for years, and I simply get nowhere with you. So I have decided I needed to call an expert. An expert? Yes. So I've called in our friend Mark Mathis, and he he recent, well, a few years ago, he put together a movie called Spoiled. And it's all of the things you never knew you didn't know about oil. I saw it. I know. I loved it. It was very good. It was very exciting. It was easy to understand. So if he, if I can't fix you, maybe he'll, he'll make some headway on you. Well, guess what? One second. <laughs> Mark is on the line right now. Mark, are you there? I am, Andy. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, we're talking to Mark Mathis on Grassroots Radio here in Colorado. Mark, you need to help me. You need to make me a better person because I, I'm sorry. And I'm not, by the way, folks, I'm not exaggerating just for fun here. I really have a hard time dealing with these people. And, uh, before I start asking you some questions and Corey does, I just want everybody to know when Spoiled came out and it was in these theaters across the Denver area and I would go to these theaters and Mark actually came to a number of them and I would see they'd just be packed. And afterwards, Mark would go down front, and he would field questions. And, you, Mark, you would just get deluged with questions, one after the other, and you handled them all. And one, one thing that really stood out to me was how even-keeled you were, <laughs> how how nice you were. 
And uh, I just I just want you to know that really impressed me. And tonight you're going to have to fix me. So does that sound good? Well, I, I don't I, I don't know that I could fix you. Um, and and uh, but I will make you feel a little better in that um, I do get as frustrated as you do at people who um, will deny energy reality. Um, it, it is frustrating when when you're when I'm talking to people who will at least listen and um, accept what I'm saying and then and then it, and come back. You know when they're making a claim and I say, well, what you just said isn't true and here's why. And if if they come back with an actual argument, then 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 it's it's a nice exchange. But if they come back with no, you're just wrong, but because it's a it's a it's a faith position that they have. It's that they can't back it up with any kind of uh, data or knowledge or analysis. Those get pretty frustrating. Um, and so you know, we we took spoiled all around the country, and and I was in front of uh, more than 150 audiences during that span. And I can tell you, there were a handful of times where I had people who were um, just uh, irrational and um, belligerent and uh and it it's a couple of them got ugly but uh so it's tough it's tough and the reason it's tough is that is that some of the people who argue these points they they're completely detached from a, a knowledge base and there's there's no logic um, they don't really know what they're talking about and so there's no baseline to have the discussion when that's not there you, you, the, the, the frustration is unavoidable. Yeah, I mean, I remember one of those environmentalists here in the Cherry Creek Theater who just went ballistic, and that was kind of rough. Um, so, Mark, how did you get interested in the topic of oil? Can you give us a little background on that? Sure. It, it was a really kind of a weird um, path that I came to do the stuff that I'm doing now. Um, yeah, I was a, a television news reporter and anchor for 10 years, uh, I got tired of that, got out of the business, and started a media relations company. Uh, and then uh, along that path, I, I really decided I wanted to teach people how to understand and use media to their advantage. So I, I wrote a, I did, did a bunch of trainings, and then that turned into a book um, that was published uh, in 2002 called Feeding the Media Beast. And it was after that book came out that I started doing much more consulting uh, and I had a, a group call me up, and it was a it was an oil and gas trade group, and they said, uh, you know, we're really not good at uh, engaging the media and telling our story. Could you, uh, you know, do a training for us? Could you help us in this regard? Because we're we're not good, and and that's generally true across the country. Mm-hmm. And so I did that, but the, that was where a really interesting thing happened. In in being a consultant to this group, and I was a consultant to, to many different groups across the spectrum, from business to nonprofit to even government. Uh, this one really fascinated me because I was so amazed that there were these, these fundamental um, realities about my life and how my life even existed. Uh, what was the foundation of that that I just didn't even know? Uh, and the more I I began learn the more I learned uh, the more fascinated I become I became and the, and the more people I talked to and then I, what I saw was most people have no idea about the essential nature of energy to their lives and most importantly the the critical role that oil plays uh, and so the last twist of this little uh, route was that I uh, wound up getting pulled into doing a documentary film with Ben Stein uh, called Expelled, and I spent a couple of years on that project. Uh, and while I was doing that, I you know learned a lot about documentary film. And, and when I was on that uh, on that film, I, I talked to the crew and said, "Hey, I'd like to do a film on oil." Uh, and uh, they said it's a good idea, and we went out and raised the money and did it. Well, tell you what, we're going to head to break here, Mark. When we come back. We'd like to get your thoughts on the impacts of the, you know, all the lower oil and gasoline prices we're seeing now. Why did it happen? What's it going to do? So uh, we're going to head to break right now. You're listening to Grassroots Radio on 560 KLZ, you're talk- and you're listening to Mark Mathis, who produced the film Spoiled. The film Spoiled. 